Hello, my fellow Rubyists. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the various ways you can install Tailwind, a robust CSS and JavaScript component library. I will be setting it up in Rails 8 and primarily focused on import maps, therefore eliminating the need for a JavaScript build. Flowby component library is open source and contains a rich set of components that are both modern and attractive. Their documentation is very thorough and they have plenty of examples that you can copy and paste into your own project. They also offer over 650 SVG icons that are free and open source, and they're compatible with both Flowbyte and Tailwind CSS. And for designers, they also offer a Figma design system with all of their components. There are a lot of great CSS and JavaScript component libraries out there, and I've tested many of them. But in the end, I found that Flowbyte offers the most seamless integration with Rails 8. And with their turbo build, even if the DOM gets swapped out, their components still reinitialize and everything works as expected. So I'm going to start by kicking off a new project specifying Tailwind as the CSS library. The first and simplest method is to simply reference the CSS file and the JavaScript file on the JS Deliver CDN. The link and script tag should be added to the application layout file like you see here. Put the Flowbyte link tag above the Tailwind link tag. The second installation method is a hybrid using import maps with the CDN. First, in the import map file, you want to pin the URL to the Flowbyte Turbo JS file and you'll want to give it the name Flowbyte. Next, you'll want to import Flowbyte in the application.js file. And finally, you'll want to add the Flowbyte link tag to the application layout file above the Tailwind link tag. In case you were wondering, if you put the Flowbyte style sheet link tag below the Tailwind link tag, you're going to run into problems when you try to use Tailwind responsive utility classes. The final installation method is to download the CSS and JavaScript files and host them with your project. First, you'll need to create an assets style sheets directory under the vendor directory. Next, you'll need to download the CSS file and put it in the new style sheets directory. I'm using curl to handle this. You'll need to do the same thing with the Flowbyte Turbo JS file, putting it under the vendor JavaScript directory. Now, in the import map configuration file, you'll need to pin the file that you don't need to specify the path, and again, you'll want to name it Flowbyte. Next, you'll want to import Flowbyte into the application.js file, making it available to the entire project. And finally, you can use the stylesheet link tag helper method to import the Flowbyte CSS into the application layout file. So when should you use each of these installation methods? Well, the first one I typically use for rapid prototyping or testing of libraries. One of the benefits of import maps, even when used with a CDN, is that it allows you to import partial modules or submodules for projects that support it, such as Lodash. While using a CDN most often reduces the download time, it also comes with the risk of the CDN going down or even the file being removed, which is why most often I prefer the third method and to host the files locally with my project. Regardless of the installation method, if you plan on using light dark mode and the toggle that comes with Flowbyte, you're going to need to add a dark mode attribute with the value of class to the Tailwind config file. In order to validate and test the installation, I'm first going to create a home controller with an index action, and I'm going to map that to the root in the routes file. And now I'll start the Rails server and visit the application in a browser. If the installation was a success, you should see the CSS file and the JavaScript file under the Sources tab on Chrome Developer Tools. In my case, it's under localhost because I installed the files locally. Yours may be under a CDN if you chose to use one. In order to ensure that the JavaScript is working, I'm going to go over here to the Flowbyte website and I'm going to scroll down and find a, a component that I know uses the JavaScript. In this case, I'm going to uh, go over to the tabs. I'll scroll all the way to the bottom. You're going to see these interactive tabs. You can see here it says it requires Flowbyte.js. I'm going to go ahead and copy this one. Um, it 
Looks like it uses JavaScript to change the tab content. We'll go back to our project and I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in. Save that and then we'll go back over and see what we get. You see here we have our tabs and you can see the content is changing when I click on them. So our JavaScript is functional. Before I wrap this video up, I want to try one more component that requires JavaScript and that is the modal dialog. So I'm going to go ahead and copy one of these and we'll go back to our application. I'm just going to add this to one of the tabs. And then I'll refresh the page and then I should see on this last tab, this toggle modal button and it looks like this is working. I'll make sure it closes. Not sure what these other buttons do. It looks like they both just close it. So yeah, that's it for setting up Flowbyte in Rails. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you like to see this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate it. And thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.